Scotty. Scotty's a poet, a documentary filmmaker, and legend, a long time DIY member. But please give up for Scotty, who's going to read a fantastic poem. Yeah. 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 Evening. Evening. <laughs> poem yeah. dedicated to Moth Bollock. Yeah. Originally written for the 30th birthday party. For those mathematicians out there, don't bother trying to work out their numbers, okay? okay? In the town of Nottingham, where the sheriff was always stoned, there lived a bunch of vagabonds, the city streets they roamed. Robin Dell in crack cocaine made Marion was on the game. <laughs> And little John and Friar Tuck were on their run in Spain. Hearing of the money made, the sheriff became a promoter. A lot of shit music got played for his punters. He cared not one iota. <laughs> Robin spoke to those he pissed off, said if no one pays, no one gets ripped off. So November 89 at the Cool Cat, the DIY sound system set out to prove that. They didn't need the sheriff, we shit music and tariff. That fledgling collective put it all in perspective and the free party people were born. From cool cat to rhythm collision, the merry folk voiced a collective vision. Purveyors of the free party dreams, pioneers of the deep house scene. Oh, on a Friday night, you should have seen us queuing up to get into Venus with all that love shared between us with a bounce ticket and a disco biscuit <laughs> trance induced in our dancing shoes oddballs, weirdos and revellers a 10k rigs with countryside views towny students and travellers bouncing on a surf chilled pill at airfields and breathing on the hill. <laughs> Strictly for groovers, narcotic hoovers, dancing on rural manoeuvres. No tickets meant more money to spend on chemicals that had us dancing for days on end. Floppy discos, party poppers, San Francisco wife swappers. <laughs> dancing in the Dancing in the rays of the sun, celebrating 2,922 days of fun. Who'd have thought it would become 19,051? Robin continued to party without a reason, in all weathers, in all seasons. The winter of our disco tent. Yeah. 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 That emanated from the banks of the Trent. Then at Castle Martin in May 92, Robin assembled a Nottingham crew. At that goose fair of debauchery, with a middle finger up at authority. <laughs> Travellers, students, ravers, townies, edible chemicals and hash brownies. <laughs> Chaos theory with Timothy Le Leary. Vivid gestures with the spirit wrestlers. <laughs> Dancing to the epic mix, jumping off their moving cliffs. Dancing with a PhD dealer doctor, firing flares at the helicopter. <laughs> the sheriff was upset about the noise. He decided he would deploy. Roadblocks, barriers against the crew, the sheriff's men he did pursue. Those who danced to repetitive beats, so they took their fight to the London streets. Against the sheriff and the criminal justice bill, it was now like raving on a paracetamol pill. <laughs> none of the pleasure and none of the fun, so Robin took the party back to square one. The deep house became the dog house, we know countryside views for anyone. Opiates, pills and crack cocaine were only poets bled in the acid rain. Dreaming in yellow yet dancing in mud, a complexity of ecstasy of that mile-high club. 
With Icarus and his sunshine lost, they flew over the sun's top. Their wax vinyl melted and they fell into a flop. Pete Disco. Landing on the poppy's pillow, they embraced the old reliable alcohol with all the charm of a naked deaf DJ with only one arm. The merry men and women were ill-equipped. Soon it was rehabs and methadone scripts. Without the merry men and women, the sheriff got on with being the villain. His clubs were playing handbag. Admission came with a price tag. The sheriff's men confiscated all the pills. Nottingham was blue, a city without thrills. The free party people cleaned up their act. They saw the city's pain and decided and formed a pact. To celebrate their 30th birthday, they decided once again that no one should pay. Robin and Cole went down to Bristol. Why is it always Bristol, by the way? <laughs> Robin and Cole went down to Bristol, returning with a van load of crystal. The best MDMA the city had ever seen. And they joined forces with Old Smoke Screen. <laughs> <laughs> to put the sheriff off the tent, the Smokies led them to an empty tent. <laughs> Leaving DIY free to follow a bright star that led them to the city's reservoir. Like the KLF burning a million nicker, the merry folk figured it would be far quicker to drop the shipment of crystal MDMA into the water supply <laughs> so no one should pay. As the city awoke on the 23rd of November, Drinking water that gave them all a splendour. It was the most wonderful thing I ever did see. The entire population of Nottingham fucked on E. <laughs> the 23rd of November is our 4th of July. So raise your glass to DIY. Be thankful that you were there dancing freely in the open air. Happy birthday to everyone. Let's celebrate 19,050 days of fun. Scotty, thank you so much for that. So what, what do you think? What do you think about that time of being involved with DIY? That whole scene. What did it give you? What are the sort of gems that you've gleaned from that time? Um, well, obviously it was a, a very strong impact on me. Yeah. 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 Introduction into uh, dance music, um, and also it was uh, sort of the way. Uh, obviously, we'd have the free festival culture, and something dance music was coming in, and. Uh, Certainly, um, a very strong feeling of unity uh, yeah. with uh, yeah. people of a like mind. Um, yeah, things. Obviously, we had the, uh, the the Tory party we're making life as difficult as possible. And certainly, with the uh, I think when dance music came along, it, it, when dance music came along, it certainly uh, it gave a bit more strength to the uh, the freedom movement where being able to gather. Um, under the stars, marquees, vehicles, people. It certainly gave uh, it gave us uh, some new impetus uh, and definitely a lot of strength. Um, and also, yeah, a meeting of different people, uh, which I, I never envisaged myself yeah. at the time. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much, Phil. Great. And let's come to embrace it. Well, I guess. I can say it another way, um, from Phil, we were in town, we'd been to festival, been to Glasgow and all these things, but then we met Phil, Emma, Boise, Sharon. So there was a synergy, without getting two points, but there was a synergy. We were living our music life, they were living their countryside life, and we didn't. <laughs> that was one way of looking at it, I think. Um, they were doing what they were doing, we were doing what we were doing. And I guess one thing I would say I took away is, when you put energy into something, you get like a thousand times back. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And we should still be doing that now. We're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> You'll 
I was recently 33 and a third. So, I think my takeaway was just a beautiful moment of just getting to like community unity. But it was really nice to see we were doing what we were doing. There was a natural affinity between the two groups and something really strong came from it. So it's the belief that things just happen. You don't decide it. You don't sit down and go, we're going to do this. You know, it just happened. So I think it was that sort of belief in those kind of things happening, which I take from it. Beautiful, thank you, Grace. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I take from it? Uh, to me, I always just look back at those times when the diversity of people, the, you know, our Liverpool mm -hmm. times, our, those early days when you just looked around and you were just with people that you would never, never, never have, 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 have had, you know, the experience of being together with. Yeah. And you take that through your life, don't you? You don't judge anyone after that. You, you, you know, you don't judge a book by its cover after that, do you? That was the bit that stuck with me forever, yeah. Oh, and a snap, I think. <laughs> 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 What did you take from, from those times? Well, crikey, he's released a book about it, doesn't he? <laughs> 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 yeah. I think, I genuinely, I think it's one of the most extraordinary things in the last 50 years culturally. So, you look culturally, the teenagers were invented in the 1950s, but you had acid, LSD, the 60s. Really important in loosening so many social taboos, abortion, you know, uh, homosexuality made coming out, and then the 70s and, and punk rock, and the 80s was acid house. So, this question it just, acid house just changed everything. It changed everything. It was a unification, not only that it was just a complete coincidence that acid house, the music, and ecstasy arrived at the same time. They could have arrived 10 years differently, they could arrive whatever. It was just spec. Stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I know we lived, I know we were together for 14 years, we know how to giggle. It was just, just a, me. Oh, I did know, yeah. It's a spectacular just coincidence, those 14 years. So the, the United Acid House, which happened in what, 87, 88, and then it was, it was a wonderful thing, no one knew it was, no one knew it was about to miss it, it was on the front page of the newspaper, Acid House Frenzy, and we didn't really know. And then we started, we were inspired, we were to, it says in the book, we went to Rock City and just danced to some acid house DJ, and it was just, just blew our minds. Me and Ruby went there in, you know, the autumn of 88, and we, I, we just blew my mind. I've always been to music, and it was just like, this is fucking, this music has been beamed from a different planet. We weren't even on ecstasy, we just a few mushrooms, and then we... Hot for a mushroom. No, but it works anyway. But it was just, and me and Ruby were just, well, I think me and Ruby were just, wow. And then we started doing our parties, house parties, and we were inspired, and then we started texting. And then, when we were in 1990, we never even thought, in, in, in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, and we looked back, but in 1990, we met these guys, Phil, travel, all the travellers, we got to name them all, they were so fantastic, but it was just like, right, fuck me. We don't have to have any rules. We can do this all week. We can do it all weekend. There's no, it's free. There's no bounces, there's no fences, there's no tickets, there's no bollocks. And it was just like fucking blinding revelation. And it was just generationally, inspirationally fantastic. And it will remain fantastic. Yeah. 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 What was funny was, and when we did loads of interviews and I said, oh, you're all from Nottingham. None of us were from Nottingham. None of the core members. Of, none of, so he's from Stockport, me and Peter from Bolton. So we grew up in Manchester with the Hacienda and we had whatever that Manchester Hacienda is, we had it, you know, and we moved to Nottingham. And then Graham Park was playing house music, as it says in the book, probably the first person in the UK to play house music in public. We started going to the Graham Park and I was Graham Park, great DJ. And it just, it was, so that was our inspirational moment with house music. We used to go to, you know, this is at 89, go listen to Graham Park and it's like, what the 
fuck is this music? Really seriously, yeah. off our tits. Yeah. Listen to this music as a bunch of crusty, well, crusty. No, we weren't crusty. Well, Grace was anyway. Grace was very well dressed anyway, in a nice frock. But then, <laughs> some of us were crusty, but we weren't crusty. We were but he just went there, and the amazing thing was that. So in the carriage, we went to the carriage on a Saturday night in 1989, it was full of the most incredible mix of people, and no one gave a shit, and we got on the power of ecstasy and house music. And that's the whole yeah. point of the book. It's unbelievable the power of the whole fucking thing to bring people together, and we just got on what's the question again? <laughs> <laughs> So we just happened to be nothing. We were looking at the three, the three centres of house, and we were without doubt Manchester and London, just by complete coincidence. Not Leicester, not fucking Derby, not but Nottingham, but a great part of us. And we were just incredible. We looked at so my big brother was a punk rocker in 19, I was 10, 11, and he was playing football. I thought, I'm too young for this, but when the next thing comes along, I'm going to be there. And we were just, we were in the right place at the right time. We had our lineage of having gone to free festivals, and me and Pete went into Crass and anarcho punk, and electro, and Hacienda, and then bam. And it was just extraordinarily lucky, really. And we rode that look, and it just, the ability of house music and ecstasy to bring us together was just <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what you like that, Mr. John. Uh, we'll pass it to Grace, so I just wonder what she oh. feels about no, the Nottingham of the two. Will you just pass the mic? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah, I mean, I moved from, from Manchester, from the Hacienda. Stop, Paul. Yeah. Completely by coincidence, not knowing about Graham Park, so we were lucky. Um, those of you who well, not even used to go to garage on a Tuesday, Thursday, mainly Friday and Saturday. Every night. <laughs> yeah, basically. So that definitely was a part of it. And uh, there's a funny sort of scene. Not there's always like the fashion crew, the barbers and boutique sets we used to call them. Yeah, so there was right. always like a scene. There's represented yeah. them here. And this one, I think Scotty was getting at in in his poem that everyone came together. We weren't the trendy scene, and I think yeah. there was a few eyebrows raised. It took a long time to actually be ex fully accepted by the barbers and boutiques. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go the back Paul to the Paul Smith crew. So, not even a social size, a size like Bristol, Brighton, it's just big enough, you're always gonna see someone on a night out, but not so small, you're gonna get sick on the side of everybody. So, and it's just, it's hard to say why it is actually. For DJ, we and Pete always used to laugh, it's two hours to anywhere. From not yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's yeah. the perfect place to be. We've got to go places. Sheffield's that we got there in 45 minutes once, I think. Yeah. 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 Then so you know, London's two hours, Exeter's three. So once so things got going, I mean, we couldn't have been a better place. I live in London now with G. It's like getting out of London, as we all know, is an hour. Nottingham mm. is 20 minutes. Yeah. So, you know, lots of reasons, but a great city. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think Jack made a really good point when we were in London and he said about the selected disc, like someone who curated yes. those records and the access to, to house music. So thank you for that. And Phil, I want to ask you from a magical perspective, has not even got any special magic? Uh, not even yet, so it's magic. Um, I think there's always been an element of. Uh, well, going back to Robin Hood, isn't it? There's always been a, an element of uh, people looking after each other um, and yeah, certainly creating um, environments so that people can uh, express themselves. I think not... why, did, why did you not move to Nottingham, travellers wise? Uh, well, I think Rhythm Collision had a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um, for the vibe, for the, the thing. The mu well, the music um, at, the, at, at the time. Uh, obviously, we were partying down south, and yeah, very good, big parties. But the music was, it was hardcore and fair play. That's what was going on. Um, we, we noticed that um, certainly uh, the DIY uh, sound was a bit more gentle. Um, <laughs> Also, the, the, the chill out music. I think I think I got my nickname because I was quite famous for playing chill out tapes. Because yeah. yeah. you're quite chill, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, I, I've always found that Nottingham was a very welcoming city. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from Reading. I lived on the road. I landed here. I followed Arsenal. Never used to get any grief for that. But, but from people from Chilwell, Bullwell, in the, in the wells where I've lived, people are always very friendly. And I think that's why I've ended up here. That, that sort of joy of being outdoors and being people, not necessarily like obviously you started off from Marcus Garvey Centre, you started your first club night there. All that, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, made it, what made you take to the fields? What was the particular sort of alchemy that was the free time to leave it? Oh, that was a great question, but I think we, so as I said before, you know, we've been going to free festivals, we've been, me and Peter have been going to free festivals since 83, and so I took about pick a bank when I was a kid, and I was 16, and going there, just blowing my fucking mind, going there, I mean, we had a 16 to black hash between us, and the well, chalk was like a coke five quid, land speed one pound, mushrooms yeah. 50p, that's what it's like, fuck's sake, how much have you got? Three quid, right, we're in. <laughs> <laughs> We were there for two days, it was like fucking right, this is, this is freedom. I mean, yeah. but for me, that was freedom, it was like, this is fucking freedom. And then, going to the Hacienda at the same time, the Hacienda stopped at two o'clock. So, it was wild, but it was like, finish time. And then when we, I just think we just, it blew our minds and said, okay, and I, looking back with hindsight, you know, we started doing house parties and they didn't finish at the time. We, the police had turned up and said, yeah, whatever, fuck off, blah, blah, blah. And then we like, right, and then we used to blow down his hi fi and have speakers. And said, okay, we said, why don't we just. Mm. They went to Glastonbury, we've been going to for, for years, for four years, and Glastonbury is the bellwether of festivals. Went there and we met these guys in that tent, and it says in the book, you know, to, and it was just like, Right, and Phil, to his eternal credit, he fought our corner against some hardcore bands. They're like, what's this disco shit? Fuck your disco shit. And we're like, what you, fuck are you, you know, but it's your sound system. So, and Phil, to his credit, fought our corner, and we got on the Friday, and got on the Sunday, and it was just like, wow. There is no barriers here, and this is what we want to do. And it was just a revelation looking back. So, this is, there's no rules, no barriers. We were anarchists, you know what I mean? We were just, there was no barriers. There was, Fuck clubs, fuck all nighters. It's like we can do this. Can we do this? And then Phil rang us up and said, Do you want to come to this party at Pepperbox Hill? Yeah, where's Box Hill? It's like, fuck, just check this out. There's no there's no rules. <laughs> there is no rules. You can do whatever the fuck you want. House really, you can do whatever drugs you want, you can listen to whatever music you want, and we're gonna go and go and go. And it was just like, this is proper. This is really proper. And it's like, okay. Uh, we, looking, we didn't, at the time, we didn't have a master plan, we had no plan at all, to go but uh, it just thought, well, well, this is, why don't we just do this for a living? Why don't we just buy a living? Why don't, why don't we just do this all the fucking time? Why? So it's like, and we were, we were particularly near it because we had outside, and to our credit and others, but the real folks were like, fuck it, won't, won't we just... Is it, can we do this all the time? Yes, we can do this all the time. And we paid for it through the club nights, we bought a sound system, it's like, fuck it, we, we can do this. We broke all the, it's like, it was so important to us. It was a bit of a I said, we would have died for it. At one point, we would have laid down our lives for it. It was just, and it was just, this is the best thing that's ever fucking happened, ever. Certainly since the 60s. This is just brilliant. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the pet box happened after 1990. Then more to lie, me and Phil made, who's supposed to be on the top of We made these, because yeah. I knew all the flights, so we made these flights with a banding machine. Anyone old enough to have a band at school, he was old as me. <laughs> but we made these, and then we did them for the next year after, we gave them out all around town, yeah. which is why I love John the Kelly, Sasha, 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 Sasha nearly the came. He's on the... <laughs> well, he was off his head at Shelley's, he couldn't make it. Yeah, she picked up the phone now, so thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. So, but in answer to Julian's question, so what happened that summer was Pepper Box Hill, and without jumping around too much, what you're talking about is the quarry part has happened quite a lot later. I'll let Harry put, fill in that gap. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> That's my book, isn't it, so, yeah, okay. But, um, no, so, as I've said, but so, after class, it was... It, you look back, hands out's a wonderful thing, you don't realise shit at the time. If you can go back, you know, if you give us an argument to start a sound system in 1988, you'd be the first time, but you don't. So it's just, shit's happened. So, Phil, to his credit, so a few weeks after Glasgow, he rang up, I think, Damien and said, oh, there's a party happening in Pepperbox Hill. 
this really beautiful sort of uh, National Trust monument near Salisbury. Do, do you want to come down? And we're like, yeah. So I missed, you know, Simon went down for the first one, he came back and he said, it's fucking mental. I played for 12 hours, all the records melted. Everyone, everyone's off the tits and nothing like that. And it's like, so what was it? It was, a, it, was, it was free. It was just like, right, we're all going to the next one. We're all going. We turned up en masse and it was just the seminal moment of the whole. It was just... And I, I give Phil a lot of credit here to send them over the whole thing. Which is like, it was just mind blowing. Like three parties looking back, hands out some you think, oh yeah, it's really obvious. It is. But it was just like, we, there, I, we arrived, I think me, we were in a car, me, Babs, and Rick at the time were in the car. We've been to some shitty rain dance pay rave with dodgers and bollocks. <laughs> and oh yeah, okay, yeah. We drove through the night, as you do. Got there, it was like, oh, fucking right. Just walked up there, it's like, wow, this is, this is, this is fucking mental. There's no. Secure, there's no nothing. It's just, and you look, you look back and laugh. We've all been to free parties and you get used to it, but at the time it was absolutely revolutionary. And it was just freedom incarnate. We got there, it was fucking all right. We dropped our pills to get there, and, and people to this day, so many people who were there. And it was like there was travellers' buses, and there was pill party, there was townies, and there was Dirt and Simon, and Simon played. God bless him. I wish he was here the twat. He said he was going to come, but you know. <laughs> he's the most unreliable bastard I've ever met in my life. God bless him. But the greatest DJ, and he just played and played, and he, get, he got records from Arcade Records and Nine, and he just played and played for fucking hours, and it was a beautiful day, and it was just spellbinding. And there was loads of people, loads of travels, there loads of, loads of this mix of people, these townies, Rory, God bless him, loads of scallies, loads of fucking, loads of travellers, townies, scallies, us lot, this, that, all, all sorts of people, all wearing different sort of clothes and all, and it was just like, we don't give a shit. And it, so that was the first, you know, I, I like to sit my neck out, so that was like probably the first proper free party in terms of a union between travellers and urban DJs and scientists. And we, we didn't know at the time, we just thought, this is fucking great, let's do it again. And the next time, so, so the travellers had, so next three weeks later, so Bart and Stacey on that airfield turned up for a room, and they were just like, this is just the best thing ever and it was an after class and we didn't really we really didn't think at the time about oh, this is groundbreaking this is let's buy sciences and this is revolutionary it was just this is just good and simon played it was, you know simon was just a dj i think jack played and they played for fucking hours and hours and hours and it was it was it was looking back it was just so almost innocent you know what I mean? it was so there was probably a hundred people there and Chris had pulled on and his fire engine and he's like it was like apocalypse now and we just and it was just magical it was just just magical and over that summer of 1990 and then we were the only people doing it and then we just you know over the summer of 1990 91 it just exploded it exploded by the summer of 91 it just exploded spiral tribe etc 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 and it but for those mad, those few months it was the most magical magical thing everyone that's on the everyone whatever you look like whatever you look like fucking you're on a horse it's a shit you're a trillion, you're fucking, you know it was just the most tolerant tolerant thing yeah and i think that's a really interesting point isn't it? that tolerance yeah Oh, fantastic. Not available, but Pike is available. None of us all look as good as Grace in it, but if it's available, we'll probably order one. Yeah. And that's the tent there, well, Pike's tent. Yeah. And we were in the best possible spot because just, <laughs> where was it? Where's the hill? There's a hill on the back there, so we can sit on the hill and like chill, whereas the rest of everyone else, who put the tent there, I'm not sure, because you went with them on the Friday. It was like the perfect place, it was put right on the edge. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I've been here for a few years, I've been 30 years this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, so that's us there, and he was looking down, so we had the perfect, you could chill on the bank, couldn't you, and just be slightly away from it all. Yeah. And there was that one, there was a couple, I can't remember the word, I said, we've looked all night for you lot, we've been everywhere. And they, were, <laughs> and they finally found us. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll go back to the author to start okay. back out the water. <laughs> Yeah, Carson Morton, April three, ninety two. We obviously um, uh, the free, well, the free party travelling sort of fraternity. We were uh, uh, coming, well, where off? We, we were coming from Breeden, uh, Breeden yeah. on the hill, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then we, yeah, we drove. Uh, 
what we thought we were going into Avon to the uh, emanating around Inkston Common. Uh, that's where the Avon Free Festival traditionally happened. Uh, I think what the police used to do in those days was they didn't used to inform uh, the other county what was going on. So we basically got pushed out of Avon. Uh, we, we headed into Gloucestershire. Um, the reason why we ended up on the hill, well, there was a lot of, it wasn't just us taking this up, but I think some of the free party people were initially on that those first few convoys, so we ended up at the top of the hill. Um, once on the hill, um, it was, uh, as it's mentioned in the book, it was like watching this electric river. It didn't stop for 24 hours, the whole world was coming. Um, and obviously, the I think the TV basically, there's a free party at the Castle Walton yeah. on a Friday Six evening. Six o'clock news. Six o'clock yeah, news. Brilliant. And that just hey, advertised Don't go, it. everyone, don't go. Um, <laughs> then also, if anyone, I'm sure everyone here might know a gentleman called Clifford. <laughs> who, well, you know, it has to be said that um, at that weekend there was one gentleman dancing around in a jester's hat. Yeah. And then I think the following Monday morning, one of the tabloids, one of the big ones, I don't know, Times or what, Guardian, but basically they had a cartoon of a dude with a jester's hat. And there was only one dude in a jester's hat, that was Clifford. Um, but no. No, it, it, it was a, a whopping event. It, it certainly had, you know, I was a, uh, the last time I'd seen anything remotely like that was um, uh, Stonehenge 1984, uh, when that was about 60,000 people. Um, yeah. 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 Stonehenge 84 was a life changing event, and uh, yeah, Castle Morton, that was. That was our Woodstock. That was our Stonehenge. That was that was it. That was that was the, uh, the Zenith. The yeah, the Zenith. Zenith. The gathering of it all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Oh. Any thoughts? What? 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 Castle Walton is fascinating because Aaron Trinder can't be here because he's uh, got COVID and he's in the stock convention and he tried to sell his. He crowdfunded like, quite a lot of money and there's a lot of initial suspicion from people about him in his stock convention, but he, he's, he's, his, his ideals are strong, you know. So basically, he, he pitched it to loads of people and loads of, he said about three parties, three parties, and they were going, That's what are you talking about? And he said, Castle Morton, oh, Castle Morton. So in some ways, it's kind of annoying because it's like, yeah, there was more to it than Castle Moor, but obviously it was the apogee, as someone said, the zenith of. And it was, but it was, it was just absolutely, again, a fucking remarkable confluence of events. So it'd been building over the winter of '91, and there was a part, big free festival in Lex Lane a few weeks before. And we, were, I said, we kind of got, we, we missed that. I think we were at Breeden on the Hill. Having a good time. Having a good time, yeah, obviously. But um, it, you can feel it, you can feel it in the air. I remember the time, I feel it in the air. Like, so Avon Free Festival has been the tra a traveller calendar since the 70s. And it was always, it was chipping strawberries the year before, it was some common. And you just feel it, it's like this is, and then it was just, sometimes you think maybe there isn't God after all. There was five days of unbroken sunshine. It was just, it was a spectacularly beautiful place. It happens, why it happened, and why the police force it. In the book, I, I studied the, the, the reporter to Castle It's so funny, and it's like, we've got reports of hippie type people asking for Castle Morton in a garage. And, it's like, and then suddenly, bam, there's 10,000 people there. Bam, there's 15,000 people there. And it was great, it was this great quote from this woman said, I can't believe it. The Samaritans know where it was, but the police don't. <laughs> And uh, the Samaritans have set those little tents up, yeah. and the police are, and the police has lost. They just, as I said, like the criminal, like the uh, poll tax, the, the police has lost whatever reason, whether you're a conspiracy theory or theorists or not. The police lost control of the situation, and it was just fantastic. And we were there. Remember, we were just pe packing up, getting a pair of in the and it was on the fucking national news. And the senior police officer going, "We advise anyone strongly not to go to Castle Walton Common." It's just full of people, full of ravers and full of travellers on drugs. Just don't go. It's like, yeah. Please. We were there by seven o'clock. And 
next day, on the Saturday night, I reckon, I've been to Glastonbury, fuck knows, 15 times, I reckon there was 50,000 people there, and it just turned into the, and what was amazing, and in my book, the, the, the main, you know, the, the main thrust, the whole point of the book is it, it's about the fucking, the, the, the dissolution of barriers. And you walk around Castle Morton, if, if you looked at it in the press and think, oh my God, it's, it's this dystopian drug nightmare. It's like a village face, it really was. It was lovely, during the day, it was like, oh, no, no, no. And, uh, it was, it was really silly, and it was just like, there was a, literally, there was a Porsche, there was a Land Rover, there was a family saloon, there was a Porsche, there was a bus, there was a, and it was every fucking sort of person you can possibly imagine there having a great time. And it completely and utterly freaked out the Conservative Party, freaked out Middle England, freaked out the Daily Telegraph, and that headline, hippies fire flares at helicopter, it was just, so I got on Travellers bus and said, look at this, and I genuinely thought they'd throw fire some trousers at the fucking helicopter. <laughs> 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 Hippies fire flares at helicopters. How do you fire trousers at helicopters? Oh, that like flare, I'd be like, they did try to bring down the helicopter, which is naughty, but we did a lot of naughty things. And you look back and think, oh, you know, but it was just, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, but it wasn't the start thing, it was the end. For us, it was the end of the, it was so big, it was so popular, it was so mental, it was so policy. We just, after that, we just moved to Derbyshire and started doing little parties because. Spile Tribe did their thing, and God bless them, good friends of Spile Tribe. They took on the state and lost. So we just we moved to Derbyshire and stuff because we wanted to do pies. But the Castle One was, it was, you know, it's like that quote, isn't it? You know, God, if you weren't there, then, you know, unfortunately, it was just, but it was, it was, it was one of those things that happens every 20 years. But it was like, you know, Woodstock was the end of hippie, it wasn't the start of it. It would stop, wasn't free. Would stop was supposed to be twenty dollars and forty thousand people. <laughs> Trash the fence, but it was a free event. No flyers, no mobile phones, no Facebook, no nothing. Everyone there, and there was just no toilets, which was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was clearly just a, a, a definitive mark, marking point. After which we, and I, just, I realised right before that we never went to a free festival again. Mm. It sounds as to me, it was, but it was, it was glorious. <laughs> And there's, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And there's a, there's a beautiful book, part of the book, where um, Harry looks out of over House Morton with Pete and says, I could have gone too far this time. It's never too far. Which I think just it's never too far. Um, audience, you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you so 